So once you've done Monopoly, um, Monopolistic Competition is pretty straightforward. So what makes it Monopolistic Competition is that you have a lot of firms similar to Perfect Competition, so it's c competitive in that sense. Um, the difference is you now have differentiated products, so these firms are selling something at least somewhat different from each other, although they're still competing with each other. Um, you still have free entry. Um, but the differentiation gives you some pricing power, some ability to set your prices. So if your product is slightly different, then if I raise my price, I'm not necessarily just losing all my sales like I would if it was in perfect competition. If I can convince people that my product is a little bit better or different for some reason, then I have some pricing power. So restaurant industry would be an example. They have lots of different restaurants. They are competing with each other, they're, but they're not selling identical products. They're differentiating their products, and so they have um, a degree of pricing power. Uh, anytime you're talking about brand names, uh, often you're talking about monopolistic competition, sometimes oligopolies, um, but then you have product differentiation, but still competing with each other. So anytime you have pricing power, essentially you are going to look similar to a monopoly because you're going to be facing a downward sloping demand curve. So remember when you have no pricing power you face that perfectly elastic demand curve. That's the case of perfect competition. But as soon as you leave perfect competition and have some degree of pricing power you are facing a downward sloping demand curve. You have your marginal revenue curve. And so in the short run this looks no different than a monopoly. Um, the difference is going to be what's going to happen in the long run. So the key thing here is how do we get to long run equilibrium? Um, because there is free entry, then profits are going to be only a short run equilibrium because firms are going to enter. And remember, this is um, these cost curves include all of our opportunity costs. So if it looks like the restaurant business in this particular area is a good place to be, as opposed to whatever the alternative is, you're going to get more entrance. So more people are going to open up restaurants in that particular area and compete away those those above normal profits. So as firms enter, this what we're looking at is, is a representative firm. And in this case, to keep it simple, we're really assuming all of our firms look alike. Um, so we're all facing the same demand curve. We all have basically the same cost curves. Um, but we could still think of it as, as differenti differentiated. But what's going to happen is that if this is my representative restaurant or firm. Then as new firms come in, I am going to see decreased demand from my product. So the way we're going to get to long run and compete away those profits, you know, someone opens up across the street from me and now I'm going to see less demand. And so you can imagine um, this demand curve shifting left as firms enter and, and, and marginal revenue is going to go with it. So demand and marginal revenue curve are shifting to left and you can see profits are going to get smaller as, you know, if I'm demand is over here somewhere, you know, now my profit is smaller and it's going to keep going basically until I'm tangent to my ATC curve because once I hit that ATC curve, price equals ATC, then I'm going to have zero profit. So that's how we're going to get to a zero profit equilibrium in monopolistic competition. So usually we, instead of trying to show the, the demand shift on the same graph, we'll just rewrite it and just we can just imagine what that transition is, but we're just going to redraw it and and show what it would look like once we've reached long run. So you could imagine the demand curve was up here before and we shifted until it's right at that tangent point because if it was anywhere above it I'd still have that profit more firms would enter and demand would decrease until right until I was tangent to that point. And so again we're profit maximizing set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost get my quantity go up to my demand curve and so given now the position of demand in ETC the best I could do is just break even here um, and so now we're in long run equilibrium. The other possibility is suppose we started out with losses um, so that so maybe we were in long run and then we saw an, an additional demand shift that's going to give us losses uh, for whatever reason and now since there's free entry and exit we're going to have firms exiting and just the opposite is going to take place. So as firms exit, so now the person across the street from me closes, um, I'm going to see increased demand for my product and that's what's going to get me back to the long run. So now demand is going to shift to the right or up um, until I am tangent to the ATC curve and then again I'm going to be back in long run just redrawing it of what it would look like in the long run. So short run again basically looks the same as a monopoly. The difference is we're going to have entry and exit 
to get us to zero profit because then now it's anything other than zero profit is not a long run equilibrium. So there's really not too much to it in terms of what is going on here. So notice in long run equilibrium, what do we have here? Um, price is greater than marginal cost. So that I didn't label it here, but that we still have this deadweight loss here. So willingness to pay, marginal benefit is above marginal cost for these extra units, just like a monopoly. Um, we produce less than a competitive industry would have produced, so we have this deadweight loss. Um, we also have what's called excess capacity in this industry. And so, so all that means is that we are on the downward sloping part of our ATC curve. Um, so in other words, if firms were larger, we could have lowered the average cost of production. And so that's what's called excess capacity. So it's just a way of saying um, that ATC, we're in the range at which ATC is still falling. Um, where at minimum ATC here, that's um, sometimes called productive efficiency. So a monopoly um, generally doesn't reach that either, although you, you have one possible case where if ATC just happens to hit right here, you would be at minimum ATC. But any other time, you know, a normal way we draw a monopoly, we would not reach productive efficiency, that minimum ATC curve, and we don't reach that here either in, uh, in long run equilibrium. So excess capacity just means that we're in the range in which ATC is still falling. Um, let me just point out one pitfall here and kind of illustrate um, an important part of our graph here. So suppose, now remember I said you have to write where price equals ATC, so could you draw it so that ATC just hits right through that point so that at that quantity I'm producing here price equals ATC and it looks like I'm at zero profit. Um, as you might guess, you cannot draw it this way. Um, and the reason is because the way I drew this particular ATC curve, you have all these units here. So if I were to produce here, I'd be making a profit. Um, so something's wrong here. Um, usually we're not tr worried about drawing our graph too precisely, but here's a case where you do have to have some precision in the way you're drawing these curves because this ATC curve is not consistent with the way we draw other curves. So not consistent with marginal cost here because we this should be showing that this is our best point, right? So our profit maximizing point, this needs to be the best point on my ATC curve. And if that's not the case, like it is here, then I didn't draw these two curves correctly. Um, so if I ran through actual numbers, it would never look like this because um, these curves are inconsistent with each other. So it would have to be that this is the best possible point because otherwise that wouldn't be showing me that this is where I should be producing. So this I'm only producing if that next unit increases my profit and I'm not producing past that point because that next unit is going to decrease my profit based on marginal cost and marginal revenue. So this curve would be consistent with these two curves. This curve would not be. Um, so it has to be tangent to that point because any other point, if I, if I move away from that Q1, right over here I have losses, over here I have losses. So the best I could do based on these curves is to produce here and have zero profit.